Thank you for studying Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. Let's read together. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you shortly, that I also may be encouraged when I know your state. For I have no one like-minded who will sincerely care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. But you know his proven character, that as a son with his father, he served with me in the gospel. Therefore, I hope to send him at once, as soon as I see how it goes with me. But I trust in the Lord that I myself shall also come shortly. Verse 25. Yet I considered it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, but your messenger and the one who mis ministered to my need. Since he was longing for you all and was distressed, because you had heard that he was sick. For indeed he was sick almost unto death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore I sent him the more eagerly, that when you see him again you may rejoice, and I may be less sorrowful. Receive him therefore in the Lord with all gladness, and hold such men in esteem. Because for the work of Christ, he came close to death, not regarding his life, to supply what was lacking in your service toward me. That's Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30. Paul was writing to the brethren from prison, yet he was deeply concerned about others. How can we care for others as he did? Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 24. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Now turn to 1 Corinthians 13. We will read verses 4 through 8. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but whether there are prophecies, they will fail, whether they are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. Now turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let's read Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23 together. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, Against such, there is no law. That's called the fruit of the Spirit. Now let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at verses 1 through 2. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God, for a sweet-smelling aroma. Now let's turn to Colossians chapter 3. Let's read together. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Therefore is the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, in forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. Now let's turn to chapter 2. Verses 7 through 8. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. Paul was writing to the brethren from prison yet he was deeply concerned about others. How can we care for others as he did? We can help others if we know about their needs. We can learn about their needs if we ask them. Having concern for others must be intentional. Love is intentional because love is an action. When we show love to others, it is a sweet-smelling aroma unto God. Love is a sacrifice unto God. God blessed Paul with many like-minded fellow workers, such as Epaphroditus. How can we apply their godly examples to our lives? Let's read Romans chapter 12. Turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, and we will read verses 1 through 3. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Verse 3. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now let's look at verses 16 through 18. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Now let's turn to Galatians chapter 5. We will read verse 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now let's look at chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another for each one shall bear his own load. Verse 
verse 6. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Verse 9. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Verse 10. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. That was Galatians. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. How can we apply these godly examples to our lives? We can apply their godly examples to our lives by being Christ-like. Our examples reflect our love for Christ. We should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Loving others is not easy if we do it in the flesh. If we try to do anything good in the flesh, then we will grow weary. Therefore, we must walk in the Spirit by, by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us. Let's all try to be godly servants like Epaphroditus. Thank you for studying Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 30 with me. Let's apply these truths to our lives with God's help. Thank you for studying God's word with me. God bless you.